Marcus Davenport, the 14th pick in the NFL draft going to the New Orleans Saints, cost them two first-rounders and a fifth to draft this young man. So they're expecting big things. But what are they getting? The buzzword around Marcus Davenport is raw. And a lot of people are asking, well, what do you mean raw? I mean, he's a first-rounder. Obviously, he's ready to compete day one right now. And also, that depends on who you ask. Um, <clears throat> It's not a question of reps with Mark Zabboy. He's a starter. He is coming from a smaller school, which means he played subpar competition. And there's some rules that you use to define those guys. I mean, one of those rules is, did they dominate their competition while playing against a lower level? And he certainly did. There's no qualms in that area. And you look at my draft guide here. There are a lot of Saints fans who feel like I just dislike Marcus Davenport as a player. And that's actually not the case. Sky high potential is how I would describe this guy. It's just not there yet. But I do think that the pairing that he's going to, joining Ryan Nielsen, being opposite Cameron Jordan, being with Sheldon Rankins, David Onyemata, and a good back end and a young secondary, there's not many places he could go that puts himself in a better spot to be successful early on and grow as an individual. Let's read some of my scouting report, and then we'll take a look at some of the film and talk about some of the good, some of the bad that he displays, and whether we think that he can be addressed and fixed early on. First, I want you to look at the best and worst categories here that I have in my scouting report of Marcus Davenport. So you see right here, use of hands. That's what UOH is, use of hands. So I like his hand work when he's playing <clears throat> on the line, especially his inside rush. Sorry about the cough there. I love his frame and size. You simply cannot teach what he is, which is almost 6'6", 264 pounds with 34-inch arms. So he's got length. You know, He's got size and his frame, as you're going to see, it's got room for another 10, 15 pounds of muscle if he wants to bulk up a little bit or if the team, rather, wants him to bulk up a little bit. He could play both as the left or right defensive end in an even front. Let's talk about some other things. Love his play strength at the point of attack. 34-inch arms, still putting up 22 reps at the bench. That's a good number. Like his linear movement. You know, when we're talking about things like pursuit and chase down, he's got it. Like what he can do there. And his ability to leverage a gap. And we see that quite a bit. And this kind of goes a little bit back towards the use of hands and maintaining leverage throughout the play. Some of the bad, though, I think these are things that are all can be worked with. Pass rush plan. We don't see him consistently come with a pass rush plan. I've talked about in brief with some of you guys what that means. You know, uh, <clears throat> suffice to say, he doesn't build up a rush plan that is going to confuse offensive linemen. He's only got a limited repertoire of moves right now. But that also can be built upon. It doesn't mean that he's weak. Simply something that needs to be worked on with good technique and fundamental coaching. Mental processing. He can be slow to key and diagnose some plays, especially things like jet sweeps. He can get caught watching and be behind the play, pursuing and reactive instead of instinctive and proactive on those plays. Need to see that improve. Got to wonder if that's going to be a thing that coaching can do, though. Next up, high pad level. This is certainly something that coaching can help rectify. We're going to see some of this in the clips that we look at in a brief film study and false stepping from a two-point stance. So a lot of times he would rush as a two-point stance guy, stand-up pass rusher, and we see him false step very often. And I'll explain what that is when we get to it and how it can be a detriment to a player and why this must be fixed. But a lot of the negatives we see with him are simple things that can be fixed with good coaching and good development. And I think Ryan Nielsen with the New Orleans Saints can help do that. But let's read a little bit more into this draft guide. Just a second here. Scheme fit. Edge rusher in a two-point or three-point stance. I love him with his hand in the dirt. I think that takes away some of the flaws that we've seen from him early. But Sean Payton did say that they're going to play him how he is comfortable. He is comfortable from a two-point stance. I think they're going to work with him in both ways. I also think this gives Dennis Allen a little versatility to show four-man uh, fronts or three-four under fronts, which really you're getting into semantics in terms of the difference, but it does give a different look. Projection, developmental pass rusher with the frame to grow, plays well with power to attack inside with the link to gain leverage and drive. Able to leverage his gap against the run and is a sure tackler. I do love his tackling ability, reliable in that area. Must develop a pass rush plan and effective counters. For those who've wondered what effective counters are, you're talking about club moves and the hand works to consistently break uh, tackles away from you when they've engaged. And I mentioned use of hands as a strength. I do like his use of hands, and this might sound like I'm contradicting myself, and it may be a little bit I am, but I do like his hand work. I do think he simply needs more moves to be able to be more effective and more efficient. And then you can see the full scouting report, read through that uh, in my draft guide if you guys have access to it. Now let's get into some little bit of film. We're going to 
go left or right and kind of go back and forth on some of this film as we talk about some of the things that he can do. We'll reference back the draft guide. We're going to start with two plays immediately that display what I'm talking about with um, not using appropriate foot to drive from and using and a false step. So right here, first play, you see how the get off is not what you would expect. A little bit slow, and I'll show you exactly why. So right here. Okay. So where he needs to be driving off of, and you'll see receiver coaches talk about this a lot, your front foot where you've got all your weight and power built into because you're, you're at that angle and everything in that hamstring, he's not launching from this point. He's actually going to launch here from his back foot behind him, and this takes away a lot of his power and potential momentum. So it takes him longer to get off on this step. And this is something simple to fix. I mean, it's just repetitions, getting them – getting him in a system where he's going to be forced to go rep after rep after rep, doing it the right way. And it might not seem like a lot, but this keeps him a half step behind the line. I'm going to rewind it just a hair so you can see what I'm talking about. All right. So look where he is now. Now that he's launching from this back foot compared to the other guy. So he's got one guy way ahead of him. He's got two guys with him. This is also, you know, a lower school, not necessarily a, you know, a, uh, Division One, Florida, Ohio State, LSU, Alabama, ACC, anything of that. But also look how the distance, because he's not able to close the gap, you're able to get that offensive lineman in his set and allow him to get there without being you know, rushed from the defensive end. So that caused a little bit of delay, which allows the offensive line to get set quicker. And, well, I mean, it gives the quarterback more time. Simple as that. But let's watch another one. Now, one thing you do like about here, because I feel like I, I can't be just harping on the negatives. There's good stuff with him. Watch the punch right here. Watch him rock the body. Bam. This is some of the handwork that I like. Look how he's able to rock the body, push that offensive tackle back, and you see the tackle has completely lost everything. His hands are out like he's praying to the Lord on worship Sunday mornings. That's a great job by Davenport. But if he had got there just a second sooner, he's probably able to disrupt this pass. Now, let's watch one from the top of the arc here. And you see something so good. And if he doesn't false step right here, he might get to the quarterback by pushing the tackle into the quarterback, like we saw Cameron Jordan do last year in the Detroit game. So I'm going to pause it real quick, and you'll see what a false step looks like here. All right. So I want you to watch this foot. It's cut out a little bit on the screen. But let's see. I might need to adjust this screen just a hair. I want to make sure you guys see this. Give me just a second to adjust this. Um, yeah, there. Barely on the edge. All right. Now you can see him. So watch this foot and what it does. And this is what a false step is. And it's exactly how it sounds. All right. You see that little movement? How he went backwards? Watch one more time. So what he does, instead of exploding forward immediately, he actually takes a half step backwards, which is another delay thing. Right there. See how he stepped backward to launch instead of launching off his predominant leg that he's already on? Watch it one more time. It's real subtle, but these type of things are the difference between, you know, uh, two tenths or half of a, you know, second on the clock. And I know this is micro stuff, but this can really affect the game. So watch one more time. See that? Steps back and launches instead of launching from the predominant leg that he's got his weight on. So he steps back and then launches. And you still see really good here. But because he's a little bit late here, and I'm telling you, it's a it's a hair. It's a hair. A little bit late, but watch this. Bam. Punch. Takes the inside. Great hand usage. Takes control of the breastplate. Look how he's getting upward leverage here. So at 6'6", six, six, he's able to get upward leverage on, a, on an offensive tackle, which is great. Throws him off his block. And see how the quarterback is able to release right before he gets to it. And I'm telling you, that's the difference here we're talking about. That subtle difference is between of this ball getting out of the quarterback's hand and not this false step right there. If he's already engaging with this man, pushing him back, he's either getting his hands up or he's got the tackle so far in front of this quarterback's face he can't get into the throwing lane. Something that simple can have a big effect. Let's watch something else, though. Let's watch some other good stuff. Ooh, that's decent. Uh, there's a couple plays uh, I want to – showcase and not that one that's a coverage play sorry if i'm skipping around guys Whew, there's one of them so let's go back to the scouting report real quick i want to note something 
So in the scouting report, you see, let me turn off that in the background so it's not distracting. But in an obvious passing situation, it takes advantage of length and power to bull rush, which we just witnessed, or attack inside by crashing down and displaying an adequate rip move. We'll see that in a second. Good power rusher shows good strength and the ability to convert speed to power. Now, this is not a traditional speed to power conversion that we're about to look at. But oh my goodness, this is one of those plays that just makes you fall in love with this guy as a potential impact player for any team, and especially the New Orleans Saints. Huge. <laughs> We're about to see it. Let's read a little bit more. We'll put hands into passing lanes of pass rushes outreach quarterback, good run defender, and uses aforementioned strength at the point of attack with good hand placement to set the edge and stack blocks. Maintains gaps assignments and moves laterally down the line of scrimmage in pursuit. Well, let's look at that speed to power and – and so this is not technically what we're talking about when we're talking about speed of power, but I just love this so much. And you see him because we talked about him running a 458 at 264 pounds, which is a phenomenal speed for his size. And you're going to see some of that initial quickness and speed here. Who this play is, is nasty. Nasty, nasty, nasty. Get back to the tape. All right, so you're going to see him here on the edge. Not going to be blocked. And I realize this is not something that you're going to see guys in the NFL see a ton of, but no block here. Just watch this. Bam. Whoo. My gosh. <sighs> Y'all say a prayer for the North Texas quarterback because this man just got clotheslined. It's the WWE and that hurt. That hurt me. And I'm just watching my golly, Miss Molly. That's a man running back. You better save your quarterback next time. I'm getting chewed out. Now watch his get off here. Bam. See the difference? Did you see it? I'm going to rewind it a little bit. Watch. Subtle. Bam. See how he's launching from his predominant leg now? See how much quicker he's getting off the line? See how quickly he's getting to the quarterback? By just this one step being difference? Bam. Here we come. Whoo! Close line. That quarterback threw that ball out. And just heaved a prayer. And we love that because that usually turns into an interception in the big leagues. Let's look at something else about him. Everybody's talked about his athletic scores. I mentioned it there in my scouting report. But here's a, and this is mock draftable for those who haven't checked out what mock draftable is or have used it before. But this graph shows you the percentiles of where he finishes for his position. So you see height. The length that he has, 88th percentile, really good. Weight, 39th, not a big deal because you got to keep in mind the strong side ends can get 290, you know, 295 at times. They're bigger. And he has the room to grow if they want him to play that position. For where he will probably line up at the right defensive end spot, A-OK -okay weight. Wingspan, good length, 62 percentile, above average. That's good. Arm length, I gave him a 49. 34-inch arms is good length to me. It's not elite length, but it's good. You know, and combined with his height, I think that puts him in the elite range in total. You know, you, can, you put that wingspan and the height all together when you're 6'6 with 34-inch arms, that's going to put a lot of guys at bay. Hand size. I don't really worry about this. He's in the 6th percentile. He's got little baby 9-inch hands. My hands might be bigger than Marcus Davenport. I doubt it. These are probably only like 8. I don't know. I've never measured because I'm not a professional football player. <laughs> but, yeah, not big hands. Who cares? Bench press, 38th percentile. I think that the 34-inch arms kind of knocks him down a little bit there, but he's also growing. I mean, he's going to be 22 in his rookie year. Definitely room to continue getting stronger, bigger, and everything. 20-yard shuttle, 47th percentile. And three-cone, 53 percentile. Here is some of the areas I think he needs to get better on, and that's his uh, you know, overall short area quickness. I do think that he has good lateral movement, but when he's having to go in multiple directions and change directions, something that needs to continue to be worked on for him Broad jump, the explosiveness. And this is one of the reasons I am like him so much and why I want that fall step to get fixed from a two-point stance because he's extremely explosive, 91 percentile. Vertical jump, 57 percentile. And you can't see it on the screen right there, but that 40-yard dash time is the 95th percentile for all defensive ends. And you can see some of the guys to the left of your screen who he compares to, including Bradley Chubb, with 75 percent. So you're seeing a lot of good here uh, of a player that can just make a lot of an impact. And we're going to take a look at a couple more film pieces before we go down my draft guide a little bit more. i got to rewind and find the spot that I need. Just a second, guys. Okay. So let's get this film back on here. So now you can see Davenport again from two-point stance. Good job there. I love this play, and I hate this play. Look how slow on the get-off he is here. 
way behind where I need him to be because he's so explosive when he gets that step right. But I love the move. And you'll see this a lot. It's that one-arm extension. I, I like to call it the, the Superman extension because you see Superman flying like this all the time. That's what he's doing. Good job. Gets the tackle away. And then look how he just throws his arm. He's, he's so strong. Good angle here. So look. Extends, gets low, gets into the chest of the offensive tackle, and then bam, extend. Look at that. Takes the shoulder. Now he's not only got a rush, a passing, a pass rushing lane, but he's also got containment around the edge. And then look at this. He just throws the man's shoulder all disrespectful like to get his hand in the passing lane. Love this. Just get out of my way. Just slap him in the face. Hopefully that's not a hands in the face call, but. Whew. All right, next play we're going to look. And here's you're going to see the first true sack for Marcus Davenport in this game. Once again, need him to get it off a little bit quicker, but man, look at that. Good explosion. Finally getting off the line uh, quickly. Let's look at what foot he's on here. All right. So driving off that back foot and the extent here, I like him. And this could be coaching. I mean, it depends on how you talk. <clears throat> I've always been, you know, off your, your predominant leg that you're leaning into, knee over the foot, especially in a two-point stance. But anyway, look at the explosion, the get-off here. Dips around. Dips around. Gets around right there with a nice rip move and just wails into the quarterback right here. Boop, underneath. Got him. Mm. Marcus Davenport has the potential to be a really, really good player in this league. A lot of good things. Let's go back to my scouting report, talk about a couple things with him before we wrap up this one. And I said, I'm not going to go into a full film study. I know um, a lot of you guys have basically requested that. I'd not take 30 minutes to, to lay out a player. So hope you see some really good positives and a couple of the negatives, but I think that they can all be worked on. So let's read through my full scouting report from my draft guy, and, and let's talk about him before we wrap the show. Played 43 games for the UTSA Roadrunners as an edge rusher used as both a line of scrimmage outside linebacker and a two-point stance. And when I say that, I'm simply talking about like a 3-4 underlook. Just him being in a two-point stance, uh, he can translate, in my opinion, to a 3-4 uh, linebacker if they wanted to play him there as a stand-up guy. You did see him drop back in coverage a little bit at UTSA, as well as having containment duties. So I felt like he was versatile in that area, which is why I list him as a potential Line of scrimmage, on the line, linebacker in a 3-4, or as a 4-3 player, or as a defensive end, three-point stance on both sides of the football, possesses very good length and has a height-weight proportional frame with room to add muscle mass. Good athletic ability, showing very good balance, lateral movement, agility, and explosiveness. Adequate edge rusher who possesses the athletic ability to play from a two- or three-point stance and utilizes power and use of hands at the point of attack to gain leverage. The reason I say adequate uh, edge rushers, because I still think we were talking about those pass rush moves and everything need to be added to his repertoire. Doesn't mean I don't like him. Simply needs to be built upon because he is raw. So talk about some other stuff. In obvious passing situations, he takes advantage of length and power to bull rush or attacks inside by crashing down and displaying an adequate rip move. Good power <clears throat> rusher who shows good strength and the ability to convert speed to power. Will put his hands into passing lanes if pass rush does not reach quarterback. Good run defender using the aforementioned strength at point of attack with good hand placement to set the edge and stack blocks. Maintains his gap assignment. Moves laterally down the line of scrimmage. That's the pursuit that we talked about. Navigates traffic well to sort bodies and find the ball carrier. Good tackler who wraps up and drives with power to take the ball carrier down. Uh, I did not show it on film, but there are multiple plays in the North Texas game where you see him at the goal line doing this exact thing, just dominating inside, getting back and forcing tackles for loss in the goal line. Keep in mind, going against lower talent than other teams might not instantly translate to the NFL, but you still like to see that level of domination from him, considering he's coming from a smaller school. All right, next one. Maintains gap assignments, moves laterally. We talked about that. Good tackler. We talked about that. Tough competitor who will play through injury and come up with a big play when needed. You don't see this man taking a playoff, and I love that about him. False steps from a two-point stance at times, negatively affecting his explosiveness and athletic ability. When running the arc, we've talked about this before, what running the arc is, his pad level can rise, and that's a problem because then you're giving your chest away, and good tackles in the NFL are going to engage you and stop you. Pad level rises, leaving a lot of surface area exposed on his large frame for blockers to punch and offset his rush. Fails to come with a pass rush plan and doesn't display effective counters, allowing blockers to plan against his rush and stop it, leaving his rep one and done. 
I'm talking about that is if he if his initial move gets disrupted, you really don't see him come with anything else to help you know fix that and get back into the pass rush. So a lot of times he'll get caught and he's simply caught. I think that's something that can be fixed with good coaching. Like with um, sorry, like with the pass rush and run defense can struggle to disengage from blocks if he doesn't gain immediate control. Often was stacked and moved by much smaller blockers such as running backs and tight ends. Uh, you used to because they got low in leverage. This goes back to the high pad level thing. Marginal desire, effort, and pursuit once play is past him. Now, when he's chasing a quarterback, I love the pursuit. When he's looking at you know a guy like um, jet sweep type of a play, love the pursuit. When the play is past him, I, I need to see more 100%. A good example, I love pointing to Cameron Jordan for the New Orleans Saints. That man's 100% hustle on every play. He's chasing people 70 yards down the field. We won't see Marcus Davenport do that. It's not a huge negative. It's not even something that you would look at and say, hey, we're not drafting this guy in the first round because of. Certainly not. But something that you want to see, hey, man, give 100% every play. Keep it going because maybe a guy misses a tackle and you're the reason that that play doesn't go for a touchdown. Uh, developmental pass rusher with the frame to grow into plays well with power to attack inside with length and to gain leverage and drive wins with use of hands and play strength, able to leverage his gap against the run and is a sure tackler is how we wrap up that report. Like I said, I really like Marcus Davenport as a player. I think that he's super raw so much. that has to be built into him and for him to be ready to go as a true three down player. I honestly see him. And this is just my opinion as a rotational piece in his first year. And I know a lot of people are going to say, man, there's no way you can spend that amount of collateral on having rotation. But I think that they are going to slowly work him in. You do not want to rush a guy because you want him to get those positive reps. I've talked about this before. You can have positive reps and negative reps. You need positive reps from him. You don't want to put him in a situation where he starts learning bad things or keeping bad tactics. You want him to do good and keep doing good and build upon that. And if that means that he's used on second and third downs and not on first down, who cares? Let him grow as a player. He has the potential to be a double-digit sack guy year in and year out with Pro Bowl and all-pro potential. You just got to get him there. I think the New Orleans Saints are a great situation for that. So, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. We'll have more scoops and all the draft picks for the New Orleans Saints and even some for the other teams. Who that God bless. We'll see you next time.